العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنة لا يوم الدين يوم بعد Alhamdulillah, we're in one of the best places that you can be, gatherings of khair. We're back on our book, Alhamdulillah, after a very long break, Allahu Akbar. So what I'm going to do from now on, uh, I've been taking my time too long, I'm going to speed up the book, so we'll finish inshallah ta'ala, so we can cater for another book, bi'idhnillah. So we are in Dars uh, As-Sadis, As-Sadis, oh, we finished Dars As-Sadis, which is the sixth lesson, we took uh, the shurut of a salah. Who can remind us quickly what the shurut of salah are? We hear tis'atun nam. Mother? One of them is facing al qibla. Nam. Sisters, any input? Basically, look, I'll just give it to you guys. What do you do before you even come to the salah? Wudu, that's one. Min ash shurut. You gotta be a Muslim. Islam is a shart. You gotta have aql, intellect is a shart. You gotta have tamiz, discernment. Okay, as a shart. You gotta have. What else? Can you yeah. pray naked? Satur al aura. You gotta cover the aura. What do you do? Do you face uh, where there's Yehuda? No. You don't face there. You don't face Bait al Maqdis either. You face al Qibla. So istiqbal al Qibla. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, niya, good. You have to have niya. What else? Dukhul al waqt. Time has to come in. So it's tisa. It's, an, it's nine. Okay? Izalat al najas, we mentioned as well, removing off the najas. Al raf al hadath, we mentioned, which is wudu. Wudu al wudu al ma'roof. So we took all of that, alhamdulillah. You could refer to the previous recordings. We move on now to Adars al thamin okay, or at sabi'ah the seventh lesson. And the Shaykh, he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Arkanu salati wa hiya arba'ata ashara, the pillars of as-salah. Now, pillars, fi al-lughati, it means janib al-aqwa, janib al-aqwa. It is the part that up holds, uh, yani holds the building upright. With strength. And it is 14. Now, this is different to. No, no. So, this is within. These are pillars, meaning they're within the prayer now. Now they're within the prayer. So this is not kharij al mahiya we mentioned the shurut, okay? Okay, because the shurut, as you, inshallah ta'ala, when you progress and you learn usul al fiqh, you'll come to know what it means in fiqh, okay? That which, ashan, is that which is, if it exists, then the action exists. But it doesn't necessarily, if it exists, it doesn't necessarily mean the action exists, that's ashan. But with rukun, the action has to exist because it's within the prayer. He mentions that number one, al qiyam ma al qudra, wa two, takbirat al ihram, thalith, qiraat al fatiha, wa al rukoo, wa al itidan ba al rukoo, wa al sujood ala al aqba al sabati, wa al raf minhu, wa al jalsa tu bain al sajdatayni, wa al tumaanina tu fi jami al afgal, wa nam, wa al tertib. Sister, you can come in. Salam alaikum. Yeah, it's round the back. You just go round the back, shalom. والترتيب بين الأركان والتشهد الأخير والجلوس له والصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والتسليمتان. so these are the fourteen أركان in the صلاة. so going on to the first one. الركن الأول القيام مع القدرة. that is that the person stands with قدرة. that's why I said مع القدرة. person stands. so number one they stand. So long as they have the kudra, so long as they have the ability. Okay? 
Because if there's no ability, ماذا? سقط عنه الواجب. Okay. لا واجب مع العجز. Okay, that's a principle. You should write it down. لا واجب مع العجز. There's no obligation when there's inability. Is it obligatory for every Muslim to do Hajj? Is it obligatory for every Muslim to do Hajj? Allah generally. obliged, generally, generally, Allah obliged every Muslim to do Hajj. If they don't have the ability, so la wajiba ma'al ajiz. Ajiz yani ya'jizu an. Ya'jizu. Is to basically be unable, incapable. La wajiba ma'al ajiz. So if you can't stand straight, you can't stand straight, then you sit. Okay? And this is taken from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith Imran ibn Hussain radiallahu anhu in which he said, Salli qa'iman, fa'in lam tastati' faqa'idan, fa'in lam tastati' fa'ala al-jamb. Rawah al-Bukhari. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that you should, salli, and this is a command, you should pray standing. If you don't have the ability, then sit in. And if you don't have the ability, then on your side. So salah is never lifted off you. And even if you don't have the ability to even move, you still pray. You still pray. Even if you can't even move your eyes, you still pray. And also the evidence of the Prophet ﷺ in hadith Abi Musa, Marawahu al-Bukhari, which the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا مَرُضَ الْعَبْدَ أَوْ سَافَرَ كُتِبَ لَهُ مُثْلَ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ نعم, عفر, Before that, we want to say another evidence. Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, "Waqumu." Allah says, "Hafidu ala salawati wa salati wusta waqumu lillahi qanitin and stand for Allah qanitin." Okay, qanitin. He means in obedience, meaning properly, meaning he means obedience and you know with 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 the full capability. Now the ulama they split in the qiyam. The standing for the prayers, they split into two. So there's fil faridati wa fil nafila. Okay? Qiyam fil faridah is the one we're talking about with a rukun. That's fil faridah. That is basically for the obligatory prayers. Okay? Now. Tayyip, for the obligatory prayers. If the person has the ability to stand, but it's going to be with some difficulty that's going to cost him some of his khushur, then it's best not to. Okay? So, but otherwise he should. Even if he's not standing exactly straight, like he may be a little bit, tiny bit, uh, you know, clutching forward or so coming a bit forward or whatever, posturing a little bit forward. Then there's the one for nafila. In the voluntary prayers. Now in the voluntary prayers, it's not obligatory. So it's allowed for the person to pray sitting, but the reward is less. Okay, you guys should provide this. Unless you, mashallah, you already know it. The person gets half of the reward. What about if the person's lying down? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what, what, what's the root before that? Who knows? Sisters, do you know which one is more or, or less? Is, is there a difference, sisters, in the reward of the person who's lying down? Is half or her? The understanding is one, and this is not a half. And lying down, more half or less? Yeah, correct. Where, where's the evidence for that? The hadith that we mentioned, we said, Salli qa'iman, pray standing. If you can't, he didn't say lying straight away, lying down, he didn't say that. He said sitting first, then he said lying down. So it takes this uh, darajah, these, these are the levels. So if sitting is half of standing, then based on this hadith, lying is half of sitting. So, you know, it goes lower and lower and lower. Okay? Now, the half and the half and half, where did they get that? 
specifically. I told you the hadith. So the hadith is in the sequence of the order of standing. If you can't, then sitting. Okay? And if you can't, here, by the way, sorry, when we say you can't, that's farida. Farida, you'll get the full reward. I'm talking about the nafila. You can, even if you can stand, you can still pray sitting. But you'll get half of the reward. Because normally you want to pray standing, sitting is the less of standing. And also lying down is less than sitting. So yeah, lying down is less than sitting. Now, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu he said, إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدِ As for the person who doesn't have the ability, by the way, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدِ أَوْ سَافَرَ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلَ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ مُقِيمًا صَحِيحًا If the person is ill or is traveling, then it's written for him that which he used to do when he was مُقِيم and صَحِيح which when he was a resident, مُقِيم, إقامة, right? مُقِيم and he was صَحِيح, he was healthy. يعني على صحتي العافية good health so what you used to do when he was in good health if you used to pray rawatib if you used to give sadaqa if you used to whatever you used to do okay مساعدة المساكين you used to help the masakin you used to go here do that if you're ill you still get the reward for that what you used to normally do when he was when he was healthy likewise when you're traveling you get what you used to do while you was a resident does everybody understand that? Is that mafum, sisters? Does everyone understand? Rukn al thani, takbiratul ihram. So now the person stood up straight, he's standing straight, or she's standing straight. And one thing we mentioned, by the way, about nafila, who remembers in the shart, one of the shurut we mentioned, when the person does a nafila, they have the ability to break one of the shurut, just like. When a person is doing a nafila, they have the ability to break one of the rukun. Who remembers that shab that they can break? I think, I think, is it a space that once you started the salat, after mm -hmm. you started the salat, you can face away from the qibla. Qibla, yes. You can face away from the qibla. The Prophet Sallallahu faced away from the qibla. So, but, but you have to start with facing the qibla. If you can, if you can. So if you can get, if you can find the qibla while you're traveling, you turn your riding beast or whatever, your car, or your body even, and you say the takbir, then you go wherever, wherever it takes you after that. Doesn't matter if it takes you north, south, west, doesn't really matter after that. It's either. But if you can't even find the qibla anyway, no problem, like in the airplane, no problem. Meaning you don't have no ability to even do it. Okay? So like some air, 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 uh, airlines, they give you um, the qibla, but you'll be facing another place. And the only way to do it is to turn fully around, but it's hard. So you just pray. But the point is, you can do without it. Similar to this, the rukun, you can do without standing. If it's a nafila, both of them also a nafila, right? Okay. Now moving on, the rukun thani, takbiratul ihram. Okay, takbiratul ihram, and that's the takbira, mean qawl Allahu Akbar, the saying of Allahu Akbar. Okay which initiates the ihram and ihram comes from the word haram which is the, it's called ihram because of those things that were normally allowed for you such as talking eating that's normally allowed right you can't do that in the salah you can't talk in the salah you can't eat and chew in the salah so if you have a chewing gum you have to spit it out okay you can't laugh you can't move around gaze around gesture <coughs> can't do the normal. They're normally what? Halal, right? That's why it's called Tabbut. Similar to that is Ihram, like Hajj. You can't do what? Wear perfume, which was permissible for you. Intercourse with your spouse, that was permissible for you. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I remember seeing a brother, uh, one time, when he was praying, and then someone entered the masjid, and they announced the salam to the salam alaykum. And then while the brother was praying, it just kind of like... Yeah, that's from the sunnah. Yeah. That's from the sun that you can do that. But it's just a gesture. Okay, it's just a gesture. So you're praying and it's not like this. It's not like this. The brother's asking about uh, if somebody walks in while you're praying and they say salam alaikum to the congregation, can they reply? Or he said someone may have gestured. And yes, that's from the sun that you can say, you can gesture. 
You can you can reply to the salams. Someone says salam alaikum while you're praying, but you just 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 you just lift your hand up slightly, or just a little bit, just so they can see that you've taken the salams, you have received the salams, right? But you don't have to lift your, you know hand all the way high or turn around and go and, you know and what does it say? Spot him. No. Yeah. Also, um, sometimes at home, I've noticed um, some people in the salam, like, what they do is, if they see something going on, like, say there's a baby causing a little uh, ruckus, as they say, then one might raise their voice when it comes to the kabir, so they say Allah or louder, mm -hmm. to try to catch someone's attention to attend to the, to the needs of the child. Is that allowed or not? Allah, I don't know but if it's allowed, but I know you can move though, and we're going to come to that anyway. Uh, we're going to come to the fact that you can move for a necessity. Okay, so it's not allowed for you to say, Subhanallah or La ilaha illallah, no. Qawl, Allahu Akbar, La yujzi'u illa have Allah. Only this statement is accepted, Allahu Akbar. And this is taken from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu He says, تَحْرِيمُ هَا التَّكْبِيرُ وَتَحْلِيلُ هَا التَّسْلِيمُ The Ulema that mentioned is the most authentic hadith in this chapter. رَوَاهُ التِّرْمِذِيُّ مِنْ حَدِيثِ عَلِي رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تَحْرِيمُ هَا التَّكْبِيرُ What makes it, what makes haram, يعني, what you normally would do, is a takbir. وَتَحْلِيلُ هَا What makes it halal, meaning what takes you out of the salah, is a taslim. Tahrimuha at takbir, or tahliluha at taslim. Now, moving on. A rukun thalith, Qiraat al Fatiha. That's also a pillar. Qiraat al Fatiha is a pillar. Okay? In every raka. Okay? In every raka. However, there's a difference of opinion when it comes to the Qira'at al-Fatiha of the Ma'moon. The one is those who are being led in a Salat al-Jahriya specifically. As for Salat al-Sirriya, all of the Salat al-Sirriya, you read it. Every Raka'ah in Salat al-Sirriya. Sirriya means the quiet prayers. Dhuhr, Asr. Those are the quiet prayers, right? And your sunan. Okay, so this is wajib for even your voluntary. So when you're praying voluntary, you can't say, ah, it's a voluntary anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to read Fatiha, I'm just going to start with Bara'atum min Allahi wa Rasulihi. I'm just going to start from Surah Tawbah. You know? All of the salahs. Here is no differentiation between voluntary or not. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ فيه لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة بفاتحة الكتاب. رواه البخاري. But the Jahriya, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, okay, and Jum'ah, Jahriya, right? These ones, the ulama, they differed. The ulama have differed. The strongest of opinion, Wallahu alam, it's a bit lengthy. Me myself, I'm I'm not too inclined to one or the other. I'm I'm I'm, I'm lent more towards the fact that it is, because, and here you should you should apply something as masalat al ahwat, which is, yani, salamatu la adiru al shay. Nothing's called equal to being safe. Take the safety measure. They're saying your salah is batil if you don't read it. The ones who are saying no, you shouldn't read it because of the prohibition of reading while the imam is reading, speaking above the imam, they're not saying it takes you out though. But these ones are saying yes, it nullifies your prayer. So you have to be, you know what I'm saying, you have to be safe. Now obviously, yes, you're going to take the call of the mufti. The mufti tells you that it's upon the mufti. Right? But when you're really looking at scholastically and, uh, you know, 
uh, in a skeptical fashion, you're just going to really try and avoid things like that. Right? And try to be a person of that nature, that type of discipline. To be able to look at Khilaf and not do what people do. They have a, you know, they bathe into the Khilaf matters and literally indulge into it and love it. And when they hear Khilaf, ka'annahum sami'u yajuz. When they hear Khilaf, it's as if they heard it's allowed. Right? No, you should be a person with that. Is, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Da'ma yuribuka. Leave that which doubts you for that which doubts you not. Hadith Abu Muhammad Hassan ibn Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hassan Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. Okay. Sikh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you should avoid it. As for the as for when the person comes and the Imam is on the Rukur, he's missed the Fatiha, right? Does he say Allahu Akbar? I try to quickly read Fatiha before the Imam comes up. No, he goes, he says Allahu Akbar and he goes to the Rukur. So here, that's his exempt there. Ruknu Nah, where are we? Rukun Thanith, Thanith, right? Nah, Rukun Rabi, Ar Ruku. Okay, Ruku. Obviously, this is taken from the Musi Li Salati, Li Musi Salah. Li Hadith Musi Salah. And that's the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in which a man he came into the masjid, he said salam to the Prophet, and then he prayed, he, then he prayed, he prayed. Uh, now, the man entered the prayer and he prayed, then he came to the Prophet وسلم, and said salams. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, Irjit for salli for inna kalam to salli. Go and pray if indeed you haven't prayed. So he said that he done that three times, kept on coming back. The Prophet kept on sending him back. Go and pray, you haven't prayed. Go and pray, you haven't prayed. Third time, he said, He says, By the one who sent you with the truth, i.e. Allah, I, I, don't, I can't do better than this. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, If you stand in salah, do the takbir. Then read that was easy for you from the Quran after Fatiha. Then do rukur until you are have tumanina tranquility in your rukur. Then rise up until you are tranquil in your rising up. Uh, then go in sujood. جالسا ثم ارفع حتى تطمئن جالس ثم ارفع حتى تطمئن جالسا then get up sitting to your tranquil in your sitting وافعل ذلك في صلاتك كلها and do all of that in all of your salats so here that's the proof for which one? الركوع okay and the ركوع back has to be straight knees not bent no elbows. That's also a pillar. It's rising back up, and don't do like some people do. They come up and they fling their head so fast, well, like you think they're going to decapitate their head off of their shoulders. Fling their head so fast up, throw themselves on the floor. Can't know he fainted or something. So you get up, you stay. And really the sunnah is to stay the length of the rukur. And the rukur is meant to be the length of the what? Standing. What's before the rukur? Standing. So you stand, especially in Qiyam layl. If you read long, then you stand. As it says in the hadith, his, his rukur was similar. Nahwa Qiyami. He's like, like of, similar. Not exactly, but similar or close to his standing. Then when you get up, the standing after the rukur was kind of similar to the rukur. 
That's actually the raw prayer of the Prophet Prophet But you obviously, especially in the days of age where we live in, if you're leading, try get as close to that. Introduce it, not in its unadulterated fashion, but some level. So when you get up, show the people that I'm going to stand more than you'll think. Like what normally people do, which is get up and go straight down. And if you come into the salah and uh, the imam gets up in your court, have you missed that rakah? You missed that rakah. Zakh rakah mentioned that. Yeah. When you meet the rakur, you call the rakah. Okay. And when you meet the sujood, which we're coming to, you've caught the salah. In terms of, you may have missed, but you've still joined. You still join the last one, you catch the last sujood. Now, mul'i'tidal ba'da rukur, okay? So you stand up and you're straight, stand up straight. Some people, they're standing, there's no difference between they're standing and they're rukur. So they pop their head up a little bit, you know, straight down. La hawla wa quwwata illa billah. sujood ala al-a'da'i sab'ati, the sixth. Make a sujood on the seven Bones. قال رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أمرت أن أسجد على سبعة أعظم. I've been ordered to prostrate on seven limbs. And then he mentioned the yadani, والركبتان, the two hands. He mentioned the جبهة, the forehead. But the Hadith says in Bukhari that he pointed to his nose, meaning that's why the scholars they say the forehead and the nose, so the bridge. The forehead and the bridge. Therefore, if you do sujood on just your forehead where your hairline starts, okay, and if you don't have a hairline, you know, just, just calculate it. <laughs> you know, approximate, approximation, alhamdulillah. No, there's no problem with both, alhamdulillah. But approximate it, and your forehead is your forehead, whether you have hair or not. Sah? So you lose hair, but you don't lose your forehead. <laughs> so you do it there. As for your, so, so the nose, you get like the bridge part, okay? Um, all of that, so that the jabha, and he pointed at, he said the jabha forehead, but then he pointed at the nose. And the yadan, the two hands. The two hands have to be flat. You can't do it like this, meaning the, the fingers. They have to be flat, the palms. And the knees, the two knees. And the ends of the feet, so obviously the toes and that part, right? And it has to be facing the qibla. But that's the that the point is that you got those seven on the floor. And in the hadith he also says, and no hair should be tied, nor should any clothes be tied. Meaning, that's why the brothers that have long hairs, you should let it out. And obviously sisters, of course, they have their hijab. So anyway, they don't even show their hair aslan. No. So you don't have, if you got, for example, um, huh? yeah, that as well. Like everything has to just drop so as normal. No, no, because that's, that's not tight. That's not tight. That's just covered, tucked in, you know? Wallahi, imama, in which way though? No. That one's allowed, yeah? The one with the... Yeah, but that's then, the turban, the proper season boot, so... The one... You've got it yeah, out. it has to be loose, it has to be all coming out. It has to be all coming out, okay? So you don't tie it in any way. Um, now, so moving on, inshallah ta'ala. Then... Now, I'm going to say that. وَالرَّفْعُ مِنْهُ And then getting up off that sujood. That's also a rukun. How many are we on? Seven. Seven. So let's start from the beginning. What's the first one? Qiyam al qudra, standing, with the, as long as you have the ability. Number two, takbir al ihram. Number three, sisters, qiraat al fatiha. Number four, ruku. Number five, al i'tidal. Now that's coming. Al i'tidal ba'da al ruku. Standing up straight after ruku. And then going down to sujood, sujood ala al a'da'i sab'a, sujood on the seven limbs. And then getting up of that sujood, 
والرفع منه. Then notice the next one. والجلسة بين السجدتين. Start sitting, the sitting that's between the two sajdas. Now, what is that? Why, why does the Prophet differentiate between the two? Why, why, is, it, why is the two differentiated? Hmm? Is that because That's because he says, and the rising up of the sujood is a, is a rukun. And also the sitting between the sujoods. But when you rise up off the sujood, you're sitting in it. Hold, hold it but you could also be rising up to stand. You could rise up like the second sujood in the first rakah. So the first rakah, you go down, sujood one, sujood two. What do you do? You get up to the second rakah, right? Yeah. So that's still rising as well. That's why. Because just getting up itself is a pillar and that's why he said and then another pillar is you sit in between the sujoods because they're different do you get it Zakaria, you didn't understand no i understood that there's a difference between sitting and, and rising standing up. Up, standing up from it. because when you sit when you sit you're rising up anyway so why did you put rising up as a separate because it could be rising up for standing that's why rising up is mustaqilla it's in, in independent in of itself as a rukun and then Staying sitting is also another rukun. Bayna sajdatain. That's why it says between the two sajdas. And now, what you mentioned, number nine. What ma'nina tu fi jami'il af'al? And the person should have itmi'nan, should have tranquility in all of these. So that's the qiyam ma'al qudra, standing ma'al qudra, takbiratul ihram, qiratul fatiha, ruku'ah. والرفع من والاعتدال بعد الركوع والسجود على سبعة الأعضاء والرفع منه والسجدة والسجود بين والجلوس بين السجدتين. All of that has to have وطمأنينة. And this is also where the evidence. This is the taken from the عمدة, the hadith that is what's relied on 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 for all of this, which is the hadith of the صاحب الموسى الصناتي, which is the man who came and he didn't pray right because he was praying fast. He didn't have اعتدال. He did so. He didn't have mutmainna. And tertib bain al arkani that you should have this tertib, this sequence bain al arkan. Where is that also taken from? Also, hadith Musi Salati, the one who was incorrect in his salah. Because what did the Prophet say to him? He said to him, Salah said, look at the words. Ida kumta ila salati fakabir, thum makra, ma tayasra maak min al Quran. ثم اركع حتى تطمئن راكعا ثم اسجد ثم ارفع حتى تعتدل قائما ثم اسجد حتى تطمئن ساجدا ثم ارفع حتى تطمئن جالسا ثم افعل ذلك في صلاتك كلها then do that meaning this sequence because the word ثم was used and ثم يفيد الترتيب the word the حرف ثم the particle in Arabic language gives you the idea of sequence يفيد الترتيب Okay, Tartib. Huh? So the Thumma is the idea that shows us the sequence. That's why it's a pillar. Because he said, Thummar Ka'a. Thummar Fa'a. Like that. And then he said, Thummar Fa'al Fi Thalika Kulliha. Then do mean repeat this sequence, this same sequence. So that makes it a separate Tumma'nina. Okay. No. Then he says, "What tertib bain al arkani?" We mentioned that as well. What tashahud al akhir? And tashahud to say the tashahud al akhir. Why? Because there's two tashahuds in certain salahs, right? In Fajr, there's only one tashahud, but it is akhir, it's the last, the first and last. But in other salawat, there's what? Two. So the one that's a pillar is the last one. It's good that you know this because we're going to mention an overwhelming principle that overlays all of this. And also, about this tashahud, 
here's a separate principle, uh, pillar, which is sitting for it. You know this tashahud? You have to be seated for it. Can't say it standing if you obviously have the ability. Sorry, you can't, you can't you shouldn't have that ability. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, do it lying down. I'm saying if you don't have the ability. And then third was salatu ala nabi. This is where some of the scholars have said for the first tashahud, you don't need to say salat ala nabi. You know the salat al Ibrahimiyyah? When you say at tahiyatu lil, when you get to was salawatu wa tayyibat. Okay? Was salatu ala nabi na salatu ala ma. Inshallah, I'm forgetting myself. Salat al Ibrahimiyyah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Inna'am. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. That, that's why some people get up. Why do you think the first tashahud is quicker? Because they stop at the shahadataini. Then, before saying Salat al Ibrahimiyyah, some of them say you can get up, which is true, you can. You can get up, or you can complete it. You can complete it. But for the last tashahud, that's why he says, وَالرُّقْنُ He said, التشهد الأخير, The last tashahud is a rukun. وَالْجُلُوسُ لَهْ And sitting for it is a tashahud. وَالصَّلَاةُ عَلَى النَّبِي And doing salah upon the Nabi in it is a tashahud. وَالتَّسْلِيمَتَانِ And saying the two taslims in it is a tashahud. All of that is for tashahud al-akhir. You have to say taslimatani, both the taslims. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah, salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. But both is a pillar. Huh? Both, both is a pillar. Salaam alaikum. There's different, obviously, the different seer. Sometimes salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sometimes salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salaam alaikum. Like that. There's different. Also, I've seen people just do it on the right side of the side. They don't do it on the rest. Allah, I don't know if there's any evidence for that. Me personally, I'm only familiar with this. Uh, the only one I know is um, is the one where you look on you look only on the one side when it's uh, funeral prayer. Mm -hmm. So funeral prayer is you know you just say salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now a rukun. Now let's move on. Inshallah. So these are all rukun. Now understand. Here's a tabi. It's very important. These arkan, a person's salah is not accepted without it. Whether even if it was nasiyan or amdan, even was out of forgetfulness or on purpose, it doesn't matter. If you haven't done the sujood, if you haven't done the ruku' wal i'tidal of the ruku' if you haven't done the raf'u min, for example, and you're missing, for example, تتشهد الأخير. You haven't even done تشهد الأخير. So you just got up and you said, Salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. If you're missing that, then whether it's nasiyan or amdan, whether it's on purpose, obviously when it's on purpose, you're sinning. And when it's nasiyan, forgetful, la yujze. And sujood al-sahu is not, doesn't, la yujbiruhu. Sujood al-sahu doesn't fix it. You have to what? You have to start that rakah. You have to basically consider that rakah as destroyed. So, if you're on your third rakah, and in your third rakah, you realize you didn't even sit the second sujood for the rakah previous, which is what? The second rakah. You realize that. So now, you have to forget, you have to pretend that that whole rakah is gone and you're actually doing your second now. You have to consider this now your second. So then when you do it, when you do it and you go down, you have to do the shahud because it's the second. Then get up from the third again and repeat it. Then at the end, then you do the uh, uh, sujood sahu. But it's not like what we're going to come to the wajib. The wajib, if you do it out of forgetfulness, you can do sujood sahu. Or yujbiru. Yujbiru, it, it fixes it. Like we'll get to it, subhan rabbi ala, for example. نعم أما الصلوات التي صلاها وترك فيها بعض المكان في فيها as for the person who realizes what about the person who realizes that سبحان الله all this time they realize they've been praying with no sitting between the sajdatayn مثلا they get up and they go straight down or they missed a rukun one of those rukun for example there wasn't reading the fatiha 
and they found out they've been doing that all of their previous salahs. What's the warning? Did they have to repeat all of those salahs? Why? The hadith. The Prophet didn't make that man repeat everything that he done prior. He Good. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. The Prophet sallam, he didn't say, Irji' fa salli fa inna kalam tu salli wa la wa ma sallayta abadan. He didn't say, go back and repeat, because go back and pray, because you haven't prayed and you've never prayed based on this. No. He only corrected him for that. That's why the ulama they say, the salatul hadir, the salat is still present. He has to repeat it. So, what does that mean? Duhr, how long is it nowadays? Longer, right? A few hours now, right? Asr doesn't come in. Duhr comes in, it's about four or five hours now. He prayed in the first hour of Duhr. He got to the third hour of Duhr, or nearly even Duhr coming the fourth hour, right? Four hours since he prayed Duhr, and he realized, hold on. Or maybe he came to the lesson like today, and he realized, subhanAllah, I've done that from Duhr. That means I didn't do it. Duhr is still qa'im, he has to repeat it. He has to repeat it. Because they say Salatul Hadid, Salat is still here. If he remembers it, that he left the Rukun, a pillar, or she remembers that she left the pillar, and the prayer is still here, he hasn't left its time. Whether it's summer or winter, it doesn't matter how long the prayers are stretched for in terms of the window slot, you have to still repair so long as they're. But if you get to Isha and you realize, subhanAllah, Duhur, or yesterday, or two weeks ago, la, it's gone now. Anta ma'bur, you're excused now. Obviously, again, we're talking about here, it's under the pretext that this person, pretense that this person done it out of forgetfulness. Okay? As for the one who does it on purpose, that's a whole different story, that's a sinner. Now moving on, inshallah ta'ala. Moving on to uh, an amt. Taslimatan is that you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, all the different seer of the Arab from the Sunnah. Dars al Thamin, the eighth lesson, Wajibatu salah, the obligations of a salah. Now, Wajibat now is less than Rukun. So, Shurut. If they're missing, not even prayed. You're not even considered at all. Not, not one rakat is messed up. Or you have to, you know, repeat the rakat like in rukun. If you miss a rukun, the whole rakat is gone. You have to start the rakat. You have to redo the rakat. Okay, do redo the rakat. But this one is less than that now. Wajib. Wajibat is not like Rukun. Hence why if you miss something out of forgetfulness, again, this is all for forgetfulness, not on purpose. Out of forgetfulness, then yujbiru sujub sa'u. Okay? Okay? Yusalli, yani hi sujudu sa'u, tujzi'u. So the wajibat is salati wa hiya thamaniyatun, and it is eight. جميع التكبيرات غير تكبيرة الإحرام. All of the takbirs other than the first takbir, because we mentioned that's what, that's a rukun, that's a pillar. So الله أكبر that you say الله أكبر to go to ruku. Okay, that you say الله أكبر when you're going to sujud. Back from sujud, up again for the next rakah. Or between بين السجدتين between the two sujuds and coming up for the next rakah. And as for coming back off of Uruku, then also the next wajib is to say Qawlu Sami' Allahu Liman Hamidah Lil Imami Wal Munfarid For the one who's an Imam and the one who's praying alone You both say Sami' Allahu Liman Hamidah Okay? But if you're uh, an and, you also, but if you're a person who's being led You say Rabbana wa laka al-hamd And also for the first You know when you say Sami' Allah liman hamidah You also have to say Rabbana wa laka al-hamd You say Sami' Allah liman hamidah When you're the Imam Or you're the one by yourself You say Sami' Allah liman hamidah And you say Rabbana wa laka al-hamd You say Rabbana wa laka al-hamd But if you're behind the Imam 
you only say Rabbana wa lakal hamd, which is a wajib. Okay, so when you're alone, both are wajib. Sami Allah al-Man Hamida, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, when you're alone or you're the Imam. But when you're behind the Imam, only Rabbana wa lakal hamd is wajib. And when you're in the Ruku', the fourth, Qawlu sab subhana rabbi al-azim fi al-Ruku', say subhana rabbi al-azim fi al-Ruku', and again, Subhana Rabbi al Azim fi al-Ruku' is obligatory on that love and it is permissible to increase it with whatever is increased or whatever type. Okay? Subbuhun, Quddusun, Rabbul Malaik, Tawar Ruh. There's different type of ways of adhkar for Ruku' You can add that. And the fifth is Qawl Sami'a Subhana Rabbi al A'la fi al-Sujood. And the uh, sixth is called Rabbi Ghfirli Bayna Sajdataini. Oh Allah, forgive me, you say. Bayna Sajdataini between the two sujuds. And the seventh wajib is Tashahadul Tashahudul Awwal. The first Tashahud. Remember the first Tashahud? That's the first one on a four or a three rakah. And the sitting for the first shahud not the sitting for the last shahud the sitting for the first shahud is also a wajib so again we repeat jami' at takbirat all of the takbirat apart from takbirat al-ihram number one number two saying sami allahu liman hamida for the imam and for the one who's by himself and rabbana alaka alham for the one who's being led that's three Fourth, Subhan Rabbil Azim in Ruku'. Fifth, Subhan Rabbil A'la in Sujood. Sixth, Rabbi Ghfirli Bayna Sajdataini between the two Sujoods. And seven, Wa Tashahud al Awwal. The first Tashahud. And eighth, the sitting for the first Tashahud. If a person forgets any of them, they do Sujood to Sahab. And it would so if you forget to say Subhan Rabbil Alim, so Subhan Rabbil Ala, you just put your head up. Oh, you just say your dua. So you go on sujood, you say Allahumma ghfirli ya Rabbil Alameen, ya Muqallib al Qulub, thabbit qalbi ala dinika, ya Musarif, Allahumma ati nufusana taqwa. Allahu Akbar. And then you realize SubhanAllah, I didn't even say Subhan Rabbil Ala first before even making dua. Then you just carry on praying, and then when you get to the end, you do sujood sa'ad. Now. Fahimtum? Uh, is the sujood the second that you got and that be a wajib or that be a fard? It's wajib, it's wajib, it's fard, it's fard because that's the thing that's meant to fix your salah that you messed up. That's what that's why it's there, it's there. So if you don't do it, I can uh, you crumble your salah. No. Uh, <clears throat> you know sometimes uh my man in Islam realizes common between the Sumalis, you know when they say Sum Allah Muhammad. Why you putting us on the map, Akhi? My bird. <laughs> they repeat it. They repeat it very loud. Like they say. You literally yeah, hear them. Mushkila. Mushkila. Somalis. So, are, are they wrong? Somalis, Somalis uh, you know what dua they're making. You probably will know how many children the man has. You probably know the names of which are Allah, God, Aisha, God, Ahmed, Allah, God, Muhammad. You know how many children the guy has and you know their names. They're so loud. But are they wrong for, like, for example, when the Imam says, Allah, 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 are they wrong for repeating? No one that? should no no one no same. one should be loud. I want to cut you off. No one should be loud in their prayer at all. Al Malaika to the other matter at the nas. The angels they get bothered by what the people get bothered by. And also you're affecting another person's khushua. That's why the ulama they say when you're praying, it's enough to move the lips and say it like that. So not like our uncles you know. Even if they said it's silent, it's okay. Is you got yeah. To, yeah, you just uh, say uh, it. Um, from the Imam or, or for an Imam? No, not the Imam. You're praying behind the Imam. No, no, the any Imam. no. Only the Imam says everything loud. Even the Allahu Akbar. No. Everything for a for a Ma'moon, for the one that's being led, everything is silent. You just utter it on your mouth, as in like to yourself. No, because we said that you just said that. Um, 
who say Rabbana wa lakul hamd after you know, Imam says Surah Allah and Khadda for us. Yeah, but not now. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I'm saying, is it wrong for someone to still say Sami Allah wa lakul following the Imam silently? Oh, no, 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 no. That's not, that, it not, it's not that it's wrong, it's that it doesn't exist. That's not okay. the way to pray. The way to pray is to say Rabbana wa lakul hamd. I don't know, Allah alam, unless you know of any evidence that says it, it's still allowed to say something like that, I've never heard it. Yeah. To me, that's a new salah, or alhamdulillah, new information, less authentic. I've never heard that. Yeah. So the one who's been led saying, Allah says, Rabbana wa lakul hamd, and he says it silently. So, yaki, all that time I had you, he was very patient, mashallah. All that time I had you thinking, I, I was thinking he was talking about someone being loud. Yeah. I was talking about both, but. He's talking about God. Yeah, okay. because they still say it loudly. Do you get that? Unfortunately. Even, then I said, even if they said it to themselves, is it still wrong for them to do that? I don't know about they should say it, no. All we know is just to say, Rabbana can hand to themselves. Right? So the person prays, they don't say, Allah Akbar, like you always hear. No. Just a. Uh, even if it's a tiny bit loud, and they're not problem, because well, you're not trying to be loud. But some people, subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, you know? Allah <laughs> Musta'an, you know, subhanAllah. Tayyib, we end there, inshaAllah ta'ala. We'll take the next dars, inshaAllah ta'ala, which is a dars at Tasiyah, which is the Shahadataini. Sorry, the Tashahud. We're going to, the Shaykh, he put as a dars at Tasiyah. The understanding of the meaning of the tashahud. You see, the sheikh is very careful in his important lessons. So you know what you're saying. Then after that, that's al ashir We're going to do sunan al-salah. We're crossing over with Sheikh Saeed's deaths now. Sunan al-salah, then we're going to go to sunan al-wudu. Al-du'a al-istiftah. Mubtilatu al-salah. Al-mubtil al-awnam. Mubtilatu al-salah after that. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وقر رب زدني علما